Hey guys, Death Letter Magic here, back with yet another deck. Oh yes, this is the one that uh, I had shown off on live stream, and I said that it's probably more powerful than this one right here, but it wasn't done yet. Well, it's been a day and it's done yet. So this is, I, I will say, it is a weaker deck, but it's more likely to win. And there's a very, very important distinction there that I'm not going to spend five minutes explaining. Just hopefully that makes sense to you. So this will be in a wider range of decks, whereas this is just a faster, more run-you-over, quicker deck. But if you go up against certain types of control decks that are becoming more and more popular, this is what you're going to want to run instead. And it's very similar, but as soon as you add a color, you add options. So theoretically, it's just Storm Area 69 with blue added to it. <laughs> And you're going to see why that's a really good thing. So we got two Gilded Gooses. There you go. We got Incubation Druid. Awesome. Taps for mana. Great. Uh, Wildborn Preserver. Best damn card in the set. Then we got uh, Growth Spiral. Um, just because I can. This is draw a card. Drop a land. It's kind of like that Lemur, but better. Uh, then we got Merfolk Skydiver. Just one, because it's not technically a proliferate deck. But it, it's fun, and it's in the air, and you can proliferate maybe. Um, but th this is tight. I mean, this is 64 cards right now. I'm not even technically done with this yet, but it's like 11 o'clock, so I'm making the video. Uh, then we got four Sinister Sabotages, because duh. Then we've got uh, New Horizons, which is just, you know, ramp, but also a counter. I'm starting to reconsider, because it works with Incubation Druid, and putting a counter on stuff is great. Uh, but it probably would be a better idea in this deck to just gain the three life with the other version of this card. So I'm on the fence about that one. Then we got Gyre Engineer. Everybody forgets about this card. I don't know why. It's a three cost one one that taps for two. I've seen so many ramp decks not run this. What is wrong with people? People are running that two one hexproof piece of crap. Run this. I mean, yeah, it's one slower, but so what? So then we got Kiora, which is also kind of ramp, and then she may take the pressure off your life total. Everybody has seemed to figure out at this point that she's not that critical, and you're basically never going to get that card draw trigger in this deck. I mean, maybe. It's not impossible, but eh. Uh, but she's just good. I, I'm thinking about trimming her down to one, though. Um, in fact, yeah, screw it. Let's do it. Uh, so let's see what else we got. I don't know, I think, I'll have to recount the lands later. I'm, I'm building this literally as I'm recording. Then we got two Frilled Mystics because they're hilariously stupid. Um, I don't like losing half our fixing, though. That, that sucks because the mana base is really bad and the mana cost in this is really rough. But that's why there's only two. Then we got Biogenic Ooze to win the game. Um, it's actually not really the way you win the game. Usually it's with Crisis or Stone Coil, but, you know, it's a backup plan. It's a way to spend your mana, whatever. And uh, instead of just one giant creature with they, with, with, which they can steal or kill, you've got a bunch of creatures which, yeah, they could board wipe, but... It's one or the other, and they're in the same deck, so it makes it a little bit more evasive as a deck. Uh, then we got the Great Henge, three copies, because this is the best damn card ever. Then we got Stone Kill Serpent, which is uh, arguably tied with um, Wildborn Preserver for the best card in the set. Depends how you look at it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Reach Trample, Pro Multi, are you kidding me? I've gotten this thing up for 16 before in this deck. Then we got Hydroid Crisis. I mean, it's just a, you know, flying hand refiller life gain. Just th this thing's a disease. It never should have been printed. Then we've got uh, Mass Manipulation, which really shouldn't have been printed. I mean, if this was instant speed, I'd be calling for it to get banned right now. Right now, it's just annoying. And it is double X, and even to steal two things, you need eight freaking mana, and it's quad blue. I mean, this ain't the easiest thing to get off in the world, you know? This ain't gonna be turn three or four, so, like, how degenerate could it really be? But, uh, the amount of mana people can come up with right now in the meta, that is a problem. So the card isn't the problem, the rest of the cards are the problem. And, well, this deck explains exactly why. So I think my record is stealing two, so this isn't, like, insane amounts of mana in this deck. But if you steal the best two creatures, it's over. Or the two of their planeswalkers, that's it. So then we got one cancel Vantrance because I could. Feel free to just ignore both these. Don't even put them in. Um, scry two for four if you have literally nothing better to do. Then some islands. Castle Gear and Brig, which very, very rarely comes up. Um, I'm thinking about cutting it to two. I mean, it functions in normal forest, though, so, like, who cares? But it does come in tapped if you don't have a forest. Uh, then we got four forests, and we got a breeding pool, which is a forest. Then we got a Thornwood Falls, which is not a forest. And then a Fable Passage, which is definitely not a forest. So, I've been thinking about cutting this. I really have. In fact, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. There we go. Uh, so, the, the deck just got cheaper. Although, in paper, this is probably 300 bucks, And in Arena, it's an unimaginable amount of wild cards. But if you happen to own a lot of these... Uh, I mean, that's old, that's old. 
That's old. That's old. That's old. Yeah, actually, this is pretty wild card light, and you don't really need Wildborn Preserver. You could like run a different Hydra. You could run the Fight Hydra. That's about as good as this because it takes out flyers and it's uh, a little bit more flexible. So, you know, feel free to throw that in instead. Although that I think that's also rare and also from this set, but it depends what you opened in your packs. Uh, but that that is a direct swap out. They're very similar, believe it or not. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the deck. Let's just jump to the gameplay because you already pretty much know what it does. All right, let's blow some stuff up. So he goes first, but if I remember, he gets a little bit mana stalled in this game. Uh, the my deck works perfectly. So this isn't an example of like, oh, a representative game where everybody goes full blast. Um, it's just a, a, a good example of this deck at its full power. <laughs> uh, and I'm versing all flyers, by the way, which, I mean, green on the ground loses to anything in the air, but not this time and not this deck. So you can see he's really getting it going here, um, but I, I mean, you can look at the amount of mana I have by like turn, I don't know, three or whatever the hell it is. Wow, I think this is turn four. Uh, I decided to just adapt. I, um, I don't know, I don't adapt. Oh, I, that's right, I made a huge mistake. I tapped them for mana, and then I actually should have tapped the creature for mana later, but it didn't matter. It's not got anything to spend it on. I wouldn't have put Biogenic out there because I want to sit on the Frilled. Uh, which unfortunately can't block flyers, so I'm, I should have probably actually, with 20 to 13, just hit the gas. Um, and I probably should have just flashed in Frilled Mystic and forgotten about it, but, uh, oh well. Uh, so we got Biogenic, so there we go. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to probably kill him in three turns with that lineup, so that's pretty good. So it'll be four, then six, and then eight. Uh, it's only 18, but uh, I could swing with the crappy 1-3. <laughs> Or I was assuming I would flash in the Frilled Mystic that turn. I did pause to do the math. I uh, just recorded this quite a while ago. Uh, so that was nice, because I really didn't want him to have that, because that's his draw engine. Uh, then he goes for Opt. He's still stuck at only four lands, which, I mean, in this deck, you would think he could get something going with that. But, uh, oh, there's the fifth. Okay, I don't think he has anything else that costs one, though, so he's still, like, a turn behind. Unfortunately, I'm at nine. So I'm hoping for, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Hydroid Crisis to be in the air and to gain some life. Then, Great Henge. It's it's the greatest henge out of all the henges. Uh, gain two life off it every turn, so I cut his attack power in half. Uh, then I get a Skydiver, which I'm thinking, okay, I'll self-target it, put the counter on it, then proliferate from there out until it's big enough to block everything, gain two life every turn, I'm set. Uh, then he gets out a Risen Reef, which is nightmare scenario there. I did not want him to do that. Uh, but still... I mean, I'm only down to nine here, and then I get a Reacher, so I'm like, okay, okay, let's just go maximum mana, run him over in one turn, because he has basically no defense. So I swapped it out at the last second, the strategy here, counting up, getting the final count, looks like it's 14. Uh, I'm not going to short it, though, because he's at 14, and then I get it 15 with the plus one from the Henge. And then I swing with the Frilled, and, and the Biogenic itself, because who cares, I need damage, I got a Trampler, he knows it. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is where it gets real interesting. I think he actually just forfeits. Healer of the Glade, though. That, I mean, I'll give it to him. That's not bad. He's got four mana open. He gets another Drake out, does the math. Uh, I do compliment him on the good combo, but nope, didn't happen. All right, game two. And I think this will be the last one because, I mean, you guys know how the last deck works. This is just with blue added. So, uh, these are just examples. I mean, they're not even... You know, like, here's a how-to and the, how the deck works and all that. It's just whatever. So it sucks that that came in tap. That is mighty unfortunate. And I'm still not drawing a land. But I'm not that worried. I've got Gross Spiral, which is like a nice little catch-all. He gives me a good game. I don't know why. I, I don't know if he thinks he's going to lose. I mean, he did discard a card, so I think he thinks he's going to lose. But this game gets a little closer than you might think. Uh, either he thought he was going to win <laughs> and then tossed a finale into the graveyard. Now he should be saying good game, because now he's screwed. <laughs> but uh, I think he board wipes a couple times. The the big thing right now in the meta on the absolute top tier is to bounce everything back to hand or board wipe repeatedly, just over and over and over and over and over and over and over, until you get out some stupid piece of crap that either empties your library like Jace or is some weird alternate win con. Uh, some kind of near-infinite loop or just whatever. And this guy's already timing out. Yeah, fun. You guys are real lucky I put this at 200, uh, or 200x, yeah, right. Uh, it'd be one frame, 200%, 2x speed. 
I was about to remind him to go, but it is possible his client crashed, so I'm not going to be like a total dick about it. But uh, I decided to go for the trample. I shouldn't have done that. I should have done the Great Henge in case he had a traditional board wipe. But I can't name a board wipe that costs three, so I, th I guess I thought, well, maybe I'll get one hit in. Which, if I hit him for six this time, and then it's seven plus six the next time, that's almost lethal. And it is lethal if I bring the ramp guy, which I probably wouldn't. Uh, but he hits me with the sabotage. Uh, so that's fun. <laughs> At least he has those. So he gets the tranquil, which is plus one. That's nice for him. Uh, I, I want to get out the henge now because I'm like, okay, we're digging in. Boom. Absorb. I mean, he's back to 18. Very annoying, but he doesn't have anything established. It's not like he has a mill card on top of it. He had too slow of an open, and I think that's why he said good game. He knew he'd be, like, cursed from there out. So he tried to do it, but, I mean, this isn't even, like, an example of, oh, what a great game to show as a representative example. This was like, look how much crazy crap this can do by turn three. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much what you should take away from this gameplay. Uh, so that's why neither one of these were like, oh, look at this amazing match where there was some back and forth and this is how I won and this is the decision making. This is just like, hey, look how fast this deck is. So yeah, I guess I'll throw in one more example. Why not? All right. Now this is the game you came here to see. This is crazy. So I love starting with two or three islands with two of them blue and then a counter spell. So I did throw out Fabled first to thin out my deck because that is the fourth land I've drawn and I don't want to draw anymore. I mean, four is good, like, I, uh, until I get my ramp stuff out and I'm, I'm holding it. So there's mass manipulation. Uh, yeah, if you draw nothing but lands, you'll actually lose. So despite what you would think, um, you do not want to get too many lands because the rest of your deck has to do things. Now, right now you're probably thinking, why did he not play Gyre? And this is why when people build my decks and they say, I can't win anything with it, play it properly. I know he's running three color. I know that it's going to rely on one particular little hinge card and I want to counter it. So we're going to go on and on and on until he does something. Cause I'm going to counter the first thing that he does and then deal with the rest later at a higher available mana cost, uh, or mana availability. So he plays veil of summer as I try to hit his risen, which is obviously the most important card in his deck. That is a comically specific, virtually unplayable card. I can't believe he main boards it. It's like something about if I cast a blue spell, then do some stupid crap. It's basically a green counter spell. Um, and by the way, he gets away with another comically specific card too. Uh, this is this is just set up to be a bad match. So there's Tamio. I hate that bitch. Uh, let's see. I liked her in uh, Farscape though. Uh, let's see. Oh wait, that no, that joke was uh, the other one, the one from uh, Zendikar. Well, you know what? They both look like her. Uh, so I thought, okay, let's just bring the snake. Because, like, he's tapped out, what is he going to do? But then I thought, well, you know what? I don't want to know the answer to that. I'm going to leave four mana open because this will stop Risen. It's enough to kill Tamio, and it's a little bit of a threat. I've got a lot of bit of a threat already in my hand, not to mention three or four turns worth of drawing. So I decided to counter that. Veil of Summer again! That is a dead card unless I'm playing blue or whatever the other color it says is. I, I, it's mind blowing that he can get away with that. Uh, it's just, I, I like stuff like that, that dinosaur that has pro blue, because if they're not playing blue, it's still a four or five dinosaur with reach trampler haste potentially. But then you might get an advantage over it. If they're playing a color that naturally stops green sort of. So that's nice. A card that does literally nothing unless your opponent's playing blue or whatever the other car color is on that card. That's stupid. That is a stupid card to main board. So anyway, he gets some stuff out. I get some stuff out. He assassins trophies my uh, uh, henge, which, I mean, giving me another land, not a great idea, but giving me one free creature every time I drop in a creature, really not a good idea. So he made the right call there. Uh, it's time to kill Tamio because I'm sick of her crap. Uh, and then I believe he, uh, you know, he isn't able to stop it. Okay, but he does take out one of them, which I saw coming, so I don't really care. I mean, it's Frilled Mystic, whatever. At least that one, if it fails, you get the Frilled Mystic. <laughs> so then he's thinking about it. He's like, okay, Command the Dreadhorde, which is not a card I want to see. Um, but then again, I do like his life total being at 13. <laughs> he does get Healer of the Glade back. I mean, this is a smart deck. This is a damn good deck. Then he gets all those absurd triggers. Risen Reef really should never been printed. I think it should be banned at this point. Uh, then Liliana's Triumph on top of it. That's just not nice. But now he's out of mana. Uh-oh, guess he ain't going to be counterspelling this, although I, I get the feeling from this deck, from what I've seen, it probably doesn't run counterspells. 
it kind of runs the green counter spell, but that's about it. I think it runs Lazotep too, but that's about it. So Tamiyo is going to light some bullshit off, and then uh, then we're going to unleash... Well, I bet you could guess at this point. Uh, here we go. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. They're mine now, bitch. Took them. All right. And then uh, I'm like, okay, Hydrate Crisis. Like, it, it's got to be in there somewhere. Like, come on. There's, 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 there's like a ton of them left in the deck. Nope. Whiff. I hate Tamiyo. <laughs> So I hit him. I mean, he's at 10. It's 10 to 21, and I got board superiority, but he's playing control colors, and he just refilled his entire hand. So I would say that I have the weak uh, state right now. Yeah, murderous, and then drop it in. Oh, mur mur two murderesses. Is, is, is. I don't know why he killed her, though. She wasn't clearly working out for me, but okay. I mean, it's not like I have elementals, so I guess. I would have taken Ojire, but that's just me. But maybe he's just like, nah, this, this bro's got enough mana. He could, he could wreck my crap. So I'm like, okay, let's go Great Henge, because uh, life gain, additional ramp, and maybe I'll be able to cascade some creatures together. As it turns out, I do believe I do. Yes, there we go. Uh, get another Growth Spiral. Those, you know, yeah, it's an opening game card, but if you get it late game, it's a cantrip, because I got so much damn mana, it might as well be free. And then it draws a card to replace itself. So that's why that card is so good. Uh, so he brings out a lifelinker. I'm not thrilled with that. Takes out my henge again. Gives me another land again, which at that point I have so much land. Yeah, I, I do approve the use of that card. <laughs> okay, then uh, let's see. I think he gets out another lifelinker, which was, since he's had four and I've got crappy creatures. Oh, he does it next turn. Huh. I'm psychic. No, just kidding. I just played this. Uh, that could have really used a counter and a card draw. That would have been pretty funny. But um, it gets a counter, <laughs> so there's that. I'm like, ah, you know, let's throw it on something else. What would be fun? Probably Risen Reef, I believe, because I'm not going to attack with the Gyro. That'd be stupid. Um, Probably should have done the, the other ones, but they're so important to just bombing him that I'm like, whatever. So nom, 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 eat the pig. Uh, 26 to 4. I'm not sure I've actually been hit this game. <laughs> but that's how his deck works. It's just steamrollers like Command the Dreadhorde. You just drop that in and just win the game usually. So uh, that, and I'm sure he's got Boar Wipes. I'm sure he's got Mass Bounce in here. He's probably just got Risen Reef. He's probably got Jace to run his library out. You guys know what this deck is. I mean, come on. Uh, the rest of these are just, you know, it's Murder and then Lifelink. I mean, it's just good cards. And they just support the all-in win con. So just in case he's got something to sleeve a triple block, people don't uh, think of that as often as they should. Um, yeah, he's super dead. He doesn't have any tricks, I don't believe. No, nope, there it is. Can't kill any of them either. Oh, actually. No, he could have killed Risen. I don't know why he did that. That's kind of weird. Oh, that's why. Well, that, that still doesn't make sense, actually. He could have killed the other one. Well, I don't know what he's doing there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. Would have been nicer with a Henge, because then I could have drawn a creature on top of it, played it. And then also jacked him up to, like, 12 in the first turn he came out. Still doesn't have Trample, though. It's a good card. This is not, like, the cure-all for everything. Now that is what we've been waiting for. So I'm going to count this manually because there ain't no way in hell I'm doing it in my head. Uh, so we're up to 6, uh, 7, 8, I don't, I don't know, 12, 12, yeah, 14, a lot, even more, some more. And I think I try to cast it for, I'm squinting because this is a preview. I don't know. He's, he just sees it and he's like, you know what? <laughs> Bye. So that's a more typical game. That's representative. Um, I took out his key stuff. He took out my key stuff. We swung at each other. He got a bomb out. I got a bomb out and I came out on top. So that's a typical way this goes. So I'll be perfectly honest with you. With that mono green deck, Storm Area 69, the second I got into Mythic, I played a couple games. I'm like, okay, whatever. I think I won two, lost two. Cool. Then today I lost nine games in a row with it. And I was starting to get really pissed off because all nine games were either Red Rush with Cavalcade, which I have some trouble stopping if I don't see it coming, which in other words, best of one. Um, or it was just control a thon crap where it, it, it didn't matter if I had creatures because I wouldn't. He would just remove every creature every other turn and I couldn't even hit the person. So... There was like three different color combinations and archetypes for that. So I'm just like, okay, this is not going to happen. It's a blitz deck, but when it runs into that much mass control, not even point removal, not just individual like, you know, kill cards, but mass removal, then we've got a problem. So that's why I, I optimized this deck, played with it. And over, I think it was 22 games, I won 80% of them. So, and that's in the Mythic League. So I'm back up to like 89 or 90% or something. And I'm playing against the high 90s. I'm not really trying to get into the top one thousand because why i don't think you get anything and i'd have to be in what the top 
eight or something to qualify for like a tournament, which I wouldn't even want to do. So, um, yeah, it, I'm just playing to see if this deck is good. And it is. So that that's my statistics report for you. So you should definitely build this one. It's very, very, very light on wild cards, as I said. Um, maybe seven or eight will get you there. Seven or eight rares and like two or three mythics, and that's it. So the one thing I got to do is work in that Force Fight Hydra. I honestly think that might be a better card than that uh, Woodland Fox thing, which that's really saying something because that, you know, it's a two cost and you boost it later, which is so flexible and so good. But Trample with a Force Fight option and it's it gets double. Ooh, it's a one and done. And if it shows up early, it doesn't do anything. But like, wow, that's such a good card. So the early game just basically has to be ramp. And then if I get rid of the Fox, I wouldn't be tempted to keep an opening hand just because he's in it. I would keep nothing but ramp and then just go, you know, which is probably a better strategy for the way this deck plays. So uh, that's my mulligan tips, my how-to tips, how to run this, when to run it, what to play when. I uh, hope you guys get a good idea for that. I hope you guys have fun with it, and I will see you guys next video.